All right, so this is part four of solving systems of linear equations using matrix row transformations. Here's our system. Write that in augmented form. Then it looks like one, two, one, and two, four, three. All right, you already got a one where you want it, so you want this two to be a zero. All right, so negative two times row one plus row two gives us a new row two. We want to multiply this one by negative two, so when we add it to two, it gives us a zero. So row one stay in the same. And row 2 is now becoming 0. And negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 4, which is 0. And negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 3, which is 1. And you say, all right, I'm done with that first column. So you go to the second column. All right, so now where do I get my 1? Well, you need your 1 right here, but it's a 0. And there's no way to get a 1 here without messing up your, your first column there. Actually, what does this algorithm matrix say now? It says this last row here says 0x plus 0y equals 1. Well, that's a false statement. Zero cannot equal one. So what do you think that means in terms of the solution to this system of equations? That's right, there's no solution. So this is what's gonna happen and, ma and uh, when you're using matrices, a row is going to drop out, and you're going to when we say that, it means that uh, you get a bunch of zeros. All right, so a row is going to drop out, and you're going to be left with a false statement. Zero does not equal one, so therefore no solution. If you were to graph both of these lines, they would be, everybody remember? They would be parallel. They would not intersect. All right, so a similar idea for, okay, say you, say you do a bunch of work, and you get your matrix down to um, one, uh, and I'm just making something up here. One, two, one, and zero, zero, zero. Say we did this. All right, so say you do a bunch of work and you get your matrix down to here uh, and an entire row drops out. You get zero equals zero. Well, that's a true statement. So that means that your original two equations, when graphed, one would fall on top of the other one and you would have an infinite number of solutions. So infinite solutions. All right, so these are the special cases when using matrix row transformations of what can happen when you get no solution or when you get an infinite number of solutions. Otherwise, you're going to get you know one solution, right? You get the one point that like we had in the in the previous two examples. All right, I want to do one more example using row transformations, and this time I want to do a three by three. All right, and I'm going to do uh, a couple of steps from one matrix to the next matrix. First thing we do is write the augmented form. So that would be two negative one. 2, 0, and 1, 3, negative 6, and 7, and 1, 1, 2, and negative 1. All right. Now, your goal is to get 1s on this diagonal like this, zeros everywhere else, and then your answers are going to spit out here on the other side of the dashed line. So the first goal is you want to make this first entry right here a 1. Well, now there are a couple things you could do. Remember, you could multiply through by half, which is what we've been doing in the previous two examples. Or we could say, hey, look, we could interchange two rows. Remember, that was one of the three things that we were allowed to do with matrices. We could interchange two rows. All right, so right now I'm going to interchange row 1 and row 2, and that would put a 1 right where I want it. And here's the notation I'm going to use to show that that's happening. Okay, so row 1 and row 2 are switching, spa switching places. Okay, so now row 1 is 1, 3, negative 6, 7. Row 2 is 2, negative 1, 2, and 0, and row 3 is still 1, 1, 2, and negative 1. Okay. All right, so now, remember, you get your 1 where you want it, and everything else in that column, because we're going to go column by column, so we get everything else in that column to be a 0. So we want this 2 here to be a 0. So that's where we, we will multiply this 1 by negative 2, so when we add it to this 2, it gets 0. So negative 2 times row 1 plus row 2 gives us a new row 2. So row 1's not changing, 1, 3, negative 6, and 7. Row 2 now becomes negative 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 2, which gives you 0. Negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6, plus negative 1, which would be negative 7. Negative 2 times negative 6 is 12. 12 plus 2 is 14. And negative 2 times 7 is negative 14, plus 0 is negative 14. Right, now, what else do we want to do? Well, we want to make that 1 in row 3 here 
um, also a zero. So we're going to do two steps from this matrix to the set to the uh, next matrix down. And so to do that, we need to get we need to multiply row one by negative one. So negative one times row one plus row three gives us a new row three. All right. So negative one times negative one times one is negative one. Plus one would be zero. That's why we're doing this step. Then negative one times three is negative three. Plus one would be negative two. Negative one times negative six is six plus two, which would be eight. Negative one times seven is negative seven plus negative one, which would be negative eight. All right, you say, all right, am I done with that first column? Do I have uh, the one where I want it and everything else is zero? Yes, I do. So you go to the next column over and get a one where you would like it. Well, you'd like this negative seven to be a one. So how do you do that? Well, you do negative one seventh times row two gives you a new row two. And again, I'm going to do several steps from one, from this matrix to this to the new one. So that's going to be zero, one, negative two, and two. Everybody cool? It's multiplying row two by, by negative one seventh. Now. Using this one that we just got, we want to make the other two entries uh, in this column to be zero. So let's make this three a zero up here in row one. So we, what do we need to multiply this one by here in row two? So that when we add row two to row one, uh, we get a zero here. All right, so that'd be negative three. So I'm going to just go right negative three times row two plus row one gives you a new row one. So negative three times zero is zero plus one gives you one. That's good because once you have a column done, uh, and, you, and you're working left to right here, once you have a column done, then that column should not be changing. All right, so negative three times one is negative three plus three was zero. That's why we're doing this one. Negative three times negative two is six. Six plus negative six is also a zero. Negative three times two is negative six plus seven, which would give you a one. Now, you also want to make this negative two down here in row three a zero. So using this one, how do we do that? Well, it's two times row two plus row three gives us a new row three. So two times zero is zero plus zero, zero. Two times one is two plus negative two would be zero. Two times negative two is negative four plus eight, which would be four. And two times two is four plus negative eight, which would be negative four. All right, so now we're done with the second column. So we're two thirds of the way done. Now you go to the next column over, and you say, all right, where do I want my one? Well, you want your one right here, just following this diagonal, so right here where this four is at. So we go one-fourth times row three gives us a new row three. So it's zero, zero, one, negative one. Now notice that we already have a zero up here where we want in row one. So row one, we're not going to change at all. We're happy, there's just less work we have to do. But now we need to get this negative two a zero. So what do we have to multiply this one by so that when we add it to the negative two, it goes to zero. So we want to go two times row three plus row two gives us a new row two. So two times zero is zero, plus zero is zero. Two times zero is zero, plus one is one. Two times one is two, plus negative two is zero. That's why we're doing it. And then two times negative one, plus two gives you zero. And you say, all right, am I done with that column? Yes, there are no other columns to go. You don't have a four by four here or anything. So now we can just read off the solutions. X equals one, Y equals zero, and Z equals negative one. Now it's called an ordered triple this time. Instead of an ordered pair, and it goes X, Y, Z. So an ordered triple here would look like this. All right, and an ordered triple is just a point in three-dimensional space. All right, so that's it for solving systems of linear equations using matrix row transformations. It takes a lot of practice. Uh, again, I encourage you to go column by column, starting from the left, uh, by getting your one in the first column and then getting zeros everywhere else in that column, and then go to the next column and get a one where you want it and get zeros everywhere else, and then go to the next column. Just kind of keep that pattern, keep repeating that pattern over and over again. And, uh, and you'll get it, you'll get down to the solution. All right, that's it. Study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.